let us uh, put out an example involving actual characteristics of a centrifugal pump next. Uh, so the details uh, of a centrifugal pump are given here, a 37 diameter centrifugal pump running at 2140 RPM with the water at 20 degrees Celsius produces the following performance data. Q, H and BHP are given at the various operating points, including uh, at Q equal to zero. Determine the best efficiency point B, if the pump is to be used for pumping 0.4416 meter cube per second of kerosene at 20 degrees Celsius at an input power of 400 kilowatts, what pump speed and impeller size are needed? What will be the head developed? And C, if the pump is to be used for an application that requires 5 meters head and a discharge of 5 meter cube per second of water, what would be the diameter of the impeller speed and BHP? Okay, let us uh, start with uh, part A. Uh, so we are asked to calculate the best efficiency point. Uh, it may be recalled that the efficiency uh, of the pump at any operating point is uh, defined as uh, rho GQH, the hydraulic power divided by BHP. So BHP is given here using these values for Q and H. We can evaluate the efficiency at uh, each operating point. We have skipped the first operating point because Q is equal to zero there. So the efficiency uh, really not meaningful. So from this, we can see that the efficiency increases as we, uh, as we had uh, said in our previous lecture. So the efficiency increases, uh, reaches a maximum and then begins to uh, decrease. And we see the same trend in the actual characteristics here. So what we have done right now, uh, is that we are given different points along this characteristic, uh, along the uh, H versus Q characteristic and along the BHP versus Q characteristic. We are just calculating the uh, efficiency curve for this uh, pump. And uh, so here is, um, here is what the efficiency variation looks like. And um, uh, there is, you can see that there is a steep drop in the efficiency towards uh, the higher flow rate region. So the best efficiency point uh, comes out to be 0 0.922. Best efficiency is 0 0.9227. And the best efficiency point is the corresponding operating condition, which is 0 0.2 meter cube per second, 95 meters of head, and the BHP of 202 kilowatts. Now, before we can answer the next two questions, uh, notice that the next question involves pumping kerosene, whereas this data uh, pertains to pumping water at a, with a particular impeller at a particular uh, speed. So obviously, if you change the fluid and you have different flow rate and input power, then everything changes, seemingly. And here, we want to pump water, but again, you know, the head and discharge are not within the range uh, that we are seeing here. Okay, so how do we uh, use this information to select uh, the, uh, a pump of uh, suitable size and RPM and so on for this? Because this is only for one speed, one RPM and one impeller diameter. Okay. Uh, so these uh, questions, uh, B and C particularly, uh, can be answered uh, if we revisit a concept that is probably uh, well known uh, to you from your undergraduate uh, fluid mechanics course, namely similitude. Uh, so let us kind of get an informal introduction to that. So here we are actually looking at centrifugal pump characteristics, but uh, for different impeller diameters with the same angular uh, speed. So basically, each one of this curve corresponds to the data that is given in this table. Okay, so each one of this uh, uh, this curve and each one of this line corresponds to, uh, this is the power equal to constant line. So each one of this corresponds to a set of data like this, particular diameter and a particular omega. Uh, so uh, the corresponding efficiency data is superimposed on each one of this curve. So you can see that if you pick any diameter equal to constant, we see that the efficiency increases, reaches a maximum and then begins to fall, okay? So, so this is uh, this is increasing uh, impeller diameter, and each one of this is a p equal to constant curve. So, as the impeller diameter increases, the power required also increases, and each one of this is uh, h versus q for a constant diameter. So, as the diameter increases, the head developed also increases. Okay, uh, the net positive suction head required for each diameter is also indicated qualitatively here. 
So as we can see, this curve uh, moves to the right as the diameter increases. Okay, and you can also see that for a given diameter, the net positive suction head increases required in net positive suction head required increases with flow rate. Okay. So when we uh, when we did uh, the calculation of net positive suction head available, which was uh, this example, we calculated this to be 3.65 meters. So what we need to do is compare this with the net positive suction head required for the corresponding operating point and make sure that the actual value is uh, comfortably more than the required value. Okay. So here we have actually uh, shown uh, the characteristics uh, of a centrifugal form of different impeller diameters. We can come up with similar characteristics for constant diameter but different angular velocities that would generally look very similar to this with uh, lower angular velocities developing uh, smaller heads and higher angular velocities developing uh, higher values of heads. Okay, So it looks similar and not quite the same. Um, so what we would like to do now is, um, is to figure out some way of combining the data. Okay, So in addition to uh, having data like this for different impeller diameters, different angular velocities for, let's say, uh, pumping water, we can also generate similar data for pumping, let's say, kerosene or gasoline or some other liquid. So we have a huge volume of data that is generally available uh, in uh, connection with uh, pumping uh, liquids using centrifugal pumps, different impeller diameters, uh, different uh, uh, omega, different fluids, and so on. Uh, it would be nice if all this information can be combined into something like a universal characteristic uh, for the centrifugal pump. By universal characteristic, what we mean is uh, head versus Q uh, that is uh, universal for any uh, diameter, any RPM, and any fluid. Okay? Similarly, uh, power versus Q characteristic that is applicable for any RPM, any di impeller diameter, and any fluid. Okay. So this objective may be accomplished by using what is known as similitude or dimensional similarity, which we have studied in the uh, in the previous course on uh, fluid mechanics. Of course, uh, in today's world, such an exercise probably would be accomplished using, say, uh, machine learning. When so much data is available, uh, you can use machine learning techniques you know, to actually come up with this sort of universal behavior. And machine learning uh, strategies ideally suited for something like this. But it must be borne in mind that machine learning uh, is a brute force approach. You know, with given so much data and with enough computing power, it can come up with the best uh, combination for a given application. So it can detect uh, universal characteristics from the data. Uh, but it is a brute force approach. Now, the approach that we are going to take, namely the similitude approach or dimensionless characteristics, is, uh, is a much more of a... Uh, 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 finished approach based on uh, physics or dimensional analysis of the quantities uh, that are likely to influence the uh, quantities of interest to us. So the quantities of interest to us are the head that the machine uh, can develop and the power that is required. So we are, we are seeking dimensionless characteristics of head, universal characteristics of head versus Q and universal characteristics of PHP versus what is that? Uh, we have uh, taken the uh, G term, the acceleration due to gravity on the left hand side, because that is a universal constant and well known. So we do, do not wish to have it on the right hand side. Okay. So both the head and the BHP uh, can easily be seen uh, to be functions of the flow rate, diameter of the impeller, angular velocity, density of the fluid being pumped, viscosity of the fluid being pumped and the roughness of the impeller or rotor surface. These are possibly the uh, quantities which can affect this. So now, uh, following uh, Buckingham's Pi theorem, we form dimensionless groups. So we can form one dimensionless group for the head, which looks like this. So this is a dimensionless head, denoted as C sub H. This is a dimensionless flow rate, denoted C sub Q. This quantity here is also dimensionless. It may be recognized as the Reynolds number. And this may be recognized as the relative roughness. 
Uh, so you would have used the relative roughness to look up friction factors from the Moody's chart. So this is the same relative roughness. So this is the dimensionless PHP denoted CP. So what we are saying now is that the dimensionless uh, head uh, is a function of the dimensionless flow rate, Reynolds number and roughness. Similarly, the dimensionless power is a function, a known function of uh, the uh, dimensionless flow rate, Reynolds number, and epsilon over d. So it is this functional form F3 and F4 that we are seeking now. Okay. Uh, now, so this says that the head and the BHP are both dependent on three dimensionless parameters, CQ, which is what we want, and in addition, Reynolds number and epsilon over d. But generally, uh, for the kind of flow rates uh, that we are talking about in the context of centrifugal pumps, the flow is normally turbulent and the relative roughness value is such that the flow is generally fully in the fully rough regime. So Reynolds number and the relative roughness uh, hardly uh, play any role uh, in influencing the head or the BHP. So we may actually drop these two terms and then say that the dimensionless head is a function only of uh, the dimensionless flow uh, rate and the dimensionless BHP is a function only of the dimensionless flow rate. So we want, we are looking for a universal relationship connecting the dimensionless head and the dimensionless Q, which is a consolidation of data relating to uh, many different flow rates, many different impeller, impeller diameters, many different uh, angular velocities, and pumping of different, several different fluids. So this consolidates all the data and gives it to us in the form of a single curve. Okay. Note that we do not require such a curve for the efficiency because efficiency by definition is, is dimensionless and it is nothing but the product of CH, CQ divided by, uh, product of CH and CQ divided by CP. Okay, so we don't need to do anything special for the efficiency. So what we need to do now is how do we get this uh, functional form? So basically what is done to construct these two functional form is to go back to data like this for again, uh, many different impeller diameters, uh, many different RPMs and while pumping many different fluids. So for each case, we have this set of data and from that, we actually uh, calculate the efficiency like this. And what we then do is select the best efficiency point for each one of this case. Okay, so we select the best efficiency point for each one of this uh, case, impeller diameter, RPM, and fluid. And we calculate CP and CH for each one of this case, CP, CH, and CQ for the best efficiency point and then plot all this data in one plot, okay? So notice that if we go ahead and do that, this is the curve that we are going to get, but let us see what we have done here. So uh, we have taken the best efficiency point for each case, namely one impeller diameter running at a particular RPM, pumping a particular fluid. Okay? So we have calculated best efficiency uh, point for that. And then from the best efficiency point, we have calculated uh, CH for the best efficiency point, CQ for the best efficiency point, and CP for the best efficiency point, and then plotted that here. And of course, efficiency also, and plotted that here. So when we do this for the entire volume of data that we have, many different diameters, many different RPM, uh, many different fluids, uh, all of them generally fall into uh, curves like this universal curves like this. So this is the universal or universal functional form that we have been looking for. This is, so this here is what we have denoted as, uh, this, uh, this here is what we have denoted as FP. And this curve here is what we have denoted as FH, the universal uh, relation connecting CH and CQ. So once we have something like this for any application, this information may be used to select uh, a particular impeller diameter and uh, a particular RPM for the application in hand. Okay, so let us see how we do this for the given example. Although we have only one uh, 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 set of characteristics for this, uh, we will use this to illustrate the procedure uh, on how to select 
uh, a particular uh, pump characteristic i'm sorry on uh, how to select a particular pump for a given application okay so let us go back and look at the uh, second uh, question so if the pump is to be used for pumping so much of kerosene with an input power what would be the impeller size and uh, rpm that are needed and what will be the head that is developed okay so we uh, follow the procedure that we laid out so we calculate uh, cq ch and cp and we have calculated for all the uh, operating points but remember the universal characteristics are actually constructed with the uh, cq ch and cp corresponding to the best efficiency point which is shown in bold here okay see the other data are discarded so the advantage of doing it with the best efficiency point is that whenever you select a pump from here for a particular requirement you are actually selecting the best possible pump okay among uh, with, uh, among all the data that is actually given okay so that is guaranteed so we construct this curve with the best efficiency point but we are illustrating it here for uh, for all the points so now uh, in this particular case uh, both the uh, the flow rate and the bhp are given so we are given the flow rate and we are given the input power and the density is known so since q and bhp are given what we do is um, we can eliminate uh, omega from the expressions for cq and cp okay so the expression for cq looks like this the expression for cp looks like this uh, the other quantities are known diameter and omega alone are unknown so we can eliminate either omega between these two expressions or diameter between these two expressions both are okay so we eliminate omega between uh, these two expressions and finally write the unknown diameter in terms of these quantities what is that everything inside this bracket is known cp cq from the best efficiency point so we take cp corresponding to the best efficiency point we take cq corresponding to the best efficiency point and uh, rho is uh, 820 in kg per meter cube but uh, because this is in kilowatts we have written this as 0.82 and the q is uh, given to be 0.4416 bhp is given to be uh, 400 so using this data we can select uh, an impeller diameter of 53.76 cm for this particular application so once the diameter is known we can go back to this and calculate omega okay so omega may be evaluated from the uh, definition of cq so we use the value of cq and the given diameter and evaluate rpm to be 1540 rpm and the head developed may also be calculated from the known value of ch okay so ch is known so we plug in the value so for the best efficiency point ch is 0.1356 so we plug in the numbers and we get okay so uh, given uh, the uh, uh, the flow rate bhp and the liquid to be pumped we can get all the other quantities of interest namely the diameter rpm and the head developed notice that this is uh, head in uh, meters of kerosene column because that is the fluid that is being pumped so we can get all the other quantities that we want provided we have uh, such dimensionless characteristics available with us so that is the power of constructing uh, dimensionless characteristics like this we can actually select a pump for any application because the uh, data that goes into this actually uh, spans uh, all the diameter i mean the entire diameter range the entire speed range and the sort of fluids that can possibly be pumped so it's a very extensive data and if uh, using dimensional analysis the power of power of dimensional analysis also becomes clear from here so once we do the dimensional analysis we know what dimensional uh, dimensionless groups are uh, relevant here and once we do this this can be used for uh, selecting a suitable centrifugal pump for any application because we use the best efficiency point here whichever point we select from here is the most efficient pump for that particular uh, application that we are looking at now let's uh, now look at uh, part c uh, in part c we are actually uh, given uh the uh, head and the required head and the flow rate and we are pumping water so we are asked to select the diameter of the impeller speed and the and determine the uh, bhp required so 
we proceed in the same manner since q and h are given we eliminate omega from the expression for ch and cq and calculate the diameter of the impeller using this quantity uh, and the diameter comes out to be 3.8626 meter which is huge and we can in a similar manner evaluate the rpm which comes out to be 47 ridiculously low and a bhp value of 265 kilowatts what these numbers are trying to tell us is that a centrifugal pump is not the best choice for this these uh, uh, these curves will still tell us um, uh, what this uh, what a centrifugal pump would uh, be required or what the centrifugal pump that would be required for this particular uh, flow rate and head that is given but it may not be the best choice as we can see from here okay so clearly uh, the given uh, set of uh, head and uh, sorry head and flow rate are such that a centrifugal pump is not uh, uh, suitable for this particular application so the question that arises next is how would we then uh, select a pump for a given application so if it's a centrifugal pump then we know how to select but after selecting if it turns out that centrifugal pump is not the best how do we actually go across different kinds of pumps and then make the best choice or selection for a given application this is what we are going to take up next